Welcome again. This is Jenna Knobloch. I'm the program coordinator for NAVUG, and we're glad that you're taking time to, to learn all about budgets today. This webinar is part of our one source series called the Best of Summit 2014, and we're taking our highly rated and best attended sessions and delivering them as webinars. So whether you were unable to make it to Summit or we're in another session during that time, we're happy to be able to bring this great content to you again. We're glad to have Ken Sabahar with Solution Systems, Inc. here with us today. Welcome, Ken. Hi, welcome. Uh, good morning, everyone. Looking forward to today. Great. Before we get started, I'd like to give a quick NAVUG update. As you can see, we have a very packed upcoming calendar with great content scheduled, so we encourage you to go out to the website and register for upcoming webinars that we have. I want to remind everyone to contact me, Jenna, at NAVUG.com if you have any questions or issues with the website. It is a new system and we want everyone comfortable using it, so don't hesitate to reach out if you need help with finding a webinar, finding any content recordings um, in our library. Like I said, we're happy to help, so don't hesitate to contact if you have any questions. We launched a new one source series on Excel last Friday with a 19 tips and tricks webinar that Mark Rhodes delivered, your NAVUG program director. And we have 10 webinars remaining in the series, so head out to the website and get registered. Even if you have a conflict during the webinar time, we record the webinar and post it with the PowerPoint on the website. And then we send you an email confirmation with the link to our content library, or email notification rather, so you can download the webinar and watch it at your convenience. So you'll find the two webinars that took place uh, on Monday and last Friday in our BI and reporting folder out in the NAVA content library. Help us help you. This is your user group, so we want to know what topics you'd like to hear in 2015. We have a programming survey live right now, so please visit the survey and provide your input. Um, we'll provide the link in the chat panel as we get started here today, so you can easily visit the survey and let us know what topics you'd like to hear this year for programming. And we're happy to announce that 10 new NAV chapters were launched this year. Right here you can see the upcoming chapter meetings. If there is one in your area, please go to the website and register. We'd love to see you there. And if there isn't one in your area, but you'd like to get face-to-face -face with other NAV users, please contact us. We'd be happy to uh, get the groundwork going for a chapter meeting in your local area. For those partners on the call today, Dynamic Partner Connections will be holding pregame to Convergence on Sunday, March 15th. There will be concurrent sessions in the AX, CRM, GP, NAV, and SL product tracks from 1 to 6 in Atlanta. You can register online at the dynamicpartnerconnections.com website and also head out to check out the full schedule with sessions and session descriptions out on the website as well. March 20th from 8.30 to 2 in Atlanta, Dynamics GRC Day will be held. Anyone responsible for risk management in a Dynamics environment should consider attending. NAVUG members can attend at a discounted rate by using the NAV GRC code. And there's more information available on the dynamicsgrc.com website as well. So with that, I know Ken has great information to share, so let's get to it. I want to mention that everyone is on mute, like I mentioned earlier, just to cut down on background noise. But at any time, please type questions into the question panel on your right, and I'll keep track of them and ask them at the end. And when we do open it up for questions, you can raise your hand, and I'd be happy to unmute you for your questions. You can ask it aloud. And again, if you'd prefer to type in the question, I'd be happy to ask that for you as well. So with that, I'd like to introduce Ken. Thank you so much for joining us. Like I mentioned, this was a great session at Summit. So we're happy to have you here, Ken, to uh, present this great content to our users. I will go ahead and switch the presenter rights over to you, and we'll go ahead and get started. OK. Uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, right now, I'm uh, showing my screen NAV 2015. I do have a little a slide show here. We'll uh, take a look at, at our agenda for today and what we're going to talk about. So yeah, this is a session I led at uh, Summit 2014. Uh, it's actually adapted from a course that we deliver here regularly uh, at Solution Systems for our clients. Um, my, my glamour shot, as you can see, uh, I work at Solution Systems uh, in Rolling Meadows, Illinois. 
um, Vice President of Operations. I, I'm still involved. I have a CPA, so kind of finance and accounting is my, my background, and I, I still do a lot of consulting work uh, in this area. So our agenda for today is to first just talk about an introduction to NAB budgeting. Then we're going to go through, I'll go through kind of a detailed dem demonstration of different ways that you can enter budgets. Uh, there's a copy budget tool that we'll go through. We'll go through an example of importing budget data from Excel. And then lastly, wrap it up with a little bit of uh, financial budget reporting. After all, that's the goal is to be able to enter a budget and then report against your actual performance. Uh, and we'll look at account schedules and how you can uh, use that with budget data. And then we'll save time, probably, you know, try to save 10 minutes at least at the end for questions uh, and answers. Okay. So let's start off uh, an introduction to budgets. So the first thing, most important thing, just is to be aware of is that Dynamics NAV is delivered out of the box, no matter what version you have, um, with budgets. Um, if you're running 2009 or above, you absolutely have budgets before that there was a budget granule uh, that you had to have. Um, but it's, it has built-in budgeting. Um, it allows you to create an unlimited number of GL budgets. Uh, and it, it also supports dimensional budgeting. So if you have dimensions set up, departments, projects, uh, you know, product categories, whatever your dimensions might be, you actually can build budgets using those dimensions and then report budget to actual by dimension also. Uh, you know, even today the number one thing we see is a lot of people are still doing their budgets just in Excel or otherwise outside of NAV. And it's really simple to build a budget. So that's kind of what my goal is today is to go through this and show you that within a literally a matter of minutes, definitely, you know, you can have at least a summary level budget set up in NAV and, and be able to do uh, budget to actual reporting uh, right out of the system. Okay. Um, budgets, as it says, is integrated with account schedules. That's what we use to do actual to budget uh, calculations. And also Jet Express, which now comes with NAV, also supports, uh, you know, within the, the function, uh, grabbing budget entries uh, to do financial reporting in, in Excel. Um, so the last bullet point on here just touches on the fact item budgets versus GL budgets. Um, what we are talking about today, just to clarify, is general ledger financial budgets. So we're not going to be talking about another uh, budgeting by customer or budgeting by item number, um, unless, of course, those are dimensions that are set up in your system. Uh, that is a tool called item budgets inside NAD which allows you to budget sales dollars or sales quantities by item um, or by customer. Um, but again, today we're talking about general ledger financial budgeting. Okay. So let's talk about entering budgets. So budget, uh, you can, as I mentioned, you can have an unlimited number of budgets in NAV. Um, and we use a thing called budget names to create a budget. And then also I'm going to go through a quick demonstration here out of how to create, edit, and delete budgets. So let's start off there. I'm going to switch over uh, into my NAV. So again, I'm, r I'm running right here, NAV 2015. Um, pretty much out of the box, uh, accounting manager role center. So I'm logged in right now as the accounting manager. And up here in my navigation pane, I have access to budgets. So I'm going to open up uh, the budget. And what I'm looking at here is a list of my budget names. Uh, as I mentioned, you can have an unlimited number of budgets in the system. Uh, you can have multiple budgets for the same year. You can have different budgets for different dimension codes. Um, ultimately, we'll talk about some of the best practices when creating uh, a budget. Here I have two budgets in my system, a 2015 budget and a 2016 budget. You can see here that I've got the ability to speci specify additional dimension codes. Uh, every budget 
no matter, even if I don't have budget specified here on my budget name, I still can budget by my two global dimension codes. So you do not have to specify your, your global dimensions here if you're going to do budgeting by a global dimension. Those are automatically available. I also have a block field here. And the block field is similar to other blocked functionality throughout NAV. If I block a budget code here, uh, just put a check mark in my block field, what that means is that I can no longer make any changes to that budget. Now, if I'm a user with access to be able to edit the budget name records, I can, of course, go unblock it, make my changes, and reblock it. Um, so there's never a point in time where you can no longer go back and make revisions. But a common best practice when creating budgets is you may create an initial 2015 budget, create that, and then block that and create a new copy that becomes a projected budget that you edit throughout the year. So that way you can actually keep track of your original budget for 2015 and then also have like a revised 2015 budget that maybe you adjust as you go throughout the year based on new information that comes to light. So I'm just going to double click on my 2015 budget and this opens what we call the budget overview screen. So the budget overview screen is really where I do everything regarding budgets in NAV. Uh, this is the worksheet that I'm going to use to enter my budgets. It's also, you'll see up top here, the tools like copying budgets or importing a budget from Excel, and we're going to go through those uh, this morning. But first, what I want to talk about is, before I even start entering budget data, I want to talk about some best practices and kind of setting up this window. The first time you open the budget overview window, it's going to default to view by day. Right? No one, well, maybe some people do, but most people do not budget by day. Uh, rather, you budget for per period or per month. So those are the most common options here. You, you can budget for your by accounting period if you have accounting periods that end on different days of the month other than the last day of each calendar month. Um, if you're on a calendar month type uh, structure, uh, you just can click on month. And notice now my columns are, are the months of the year. Another common uh, thing is that you'll go up in my budget overview screen by default. Now we can limit what accounts we're looking at. Down in the bottom of the screen, I have a filters fast tab. On the filters fast tab, I can set specific filters to what data I want to look at here. So the most common thing I do is we'll set or recommend a filter to just only show me my income statement type accounts. In my Cronus company here, that's account 40,000 through 99999. So when I hit enter, now it's filtered my detailed view here, so I'm only looking at my revenue, cost of goods, and, and expense accounts. So it's just a quick way to kind of clean it up. The other thing about budgets is you'll notice that even though I'm in my budget name 2015 here, I'm looking at periods in, in 2016. And I can use these buttons up here, next period, or previous period, or next column, or next set, to change the data that I'm looking at. And this is a, a, a critical point. Even though I've called my budget name 2015, that does not necessarily mean that I can only enter budget data for my calendar year 2015. NAV doesn't really know or care um, that I'm only able to put entries into 2015. And this is actually a feature. And the reason is that you may come up with a just a master budget code and then you continue to use that across multiple years. So you do not have to have a specific budget name for each, each uh, fiscal year. You can actually just create one budget and then continue to develop that budget going forward over a period of multiple years. Um, most of our clients, however, or most people choose to actually create a, a specific budget name for each year. Uh, just to make it easier to administer and, and, and update. Okay. Um, down here on the bottom, if I want to make extra sure that I'm not in the wrong period, I can limit my date filter here to January 1st, 2015 through 12 31 15. 
Now that will kind of help ensure that in my view, I'm only entering budgets for those periods. All right. So I think I've got my, my, my window set up here. I can minimize this fast tab now that I've got my screen set here to give myself some more space. And I'm ready to start budgeting. So how do we add budgets? It's very simple. I type in to a cell, just like in, like in, in Excel, uh, you would type in a budget. And so let's start budgeting here for January 2015. Um, I can type in an amount. So let's say we're going to budget 50000 okay. Key point here, um, notice that I typed in a negative 50000 for my estimated sales. You must enter for any account that carries a natural credit balance. Uh, typically, this is just going to be all of your sales accounts and your other income accounts. You have to enter these as negatives or credits because um, ultimately when you go to run an account schedule and you're going to compare actual to budgets, so you, your actuals are going to be credits. So you want your budgeted amounts to be credits also for sales uh, and other income. Now you'll notice when I type that in, it automatically filled in for me my total budgeted amount for that GL account, and it also filled in any totaling accounts that you have built into your chart of account structure. So I can just continue typing in my budget. Now of course you can also highlight and copy a value and then paste, 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 and so on. Uh, one thing you cannot do is drag the corner like in Excel and just drag it out. That's one, one thing uh, you cannot do. So it's building my totals as I go. I, let's budget uh, 20000 for January for each month, just for six months here. I've now started, so you can see I've kind of started building my budgets. Now a lot of times people do not want to budget for each individual GL account. That, that's kind of what makes it very time consuming. So within budgets, you actually can build a budget on a totaling account. You know, you cannot post a GL actual transaction, a GL entry to a total account, but you can build a budget against a totaling account. So I may not know, for example, in sales of resources, I may not really have a good feel for domestic versus EU export and resources. I can simply type on my, total, uh, my totaling line here and just type in an amount here let's say negative 100,000 and fill in these months here. Okay. So when I said you can literally create a budget within minutes, I, I don't think I was exaggerating. You could come in here, pick a few of your key uh, total accounts, total sales, total cost of goods sold, maybe total expenses, and then quickly create a, summari a summary level income statement that shows you your, your actual to budget. Now, what did I actually do? By typing into this spreadsheet here, I want to show what, what the system is actually doing here. So if I click in one of these cells here, and let's say I want to go ahead and see this entry, by typing this negative 50,000 into here, we actually are just, the system is automatically creating what we call GL budget entries. So notice I've got my GL budget entry here. It's automatically assigned the amount, the GL account, and it uses the first date of whatever period I'm in. So in this case, right, I'm in the month of January, so it uses the first day of that period. Because keep in mind, I could budget by, by week or by quarter. So in those cases, it's going to pick the first day of the week or the first day of the quarter, and that's the date the budget's going to be built on. Another key thing here is that unlike a, G a GL entry, which once you post it, it cannot be deleted. GL budget entries can be deleted at any time. Of course, this is a, 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 you know, assuming that your permission sets for security allow you to delete entries from the GL budget entries table. But as long as you do have that access, which I do, I can simply right click and delete an entry here. Okay. So there's so the good news with that is that you don't have to worry about making mistakes. If you build a new budget, you maybe you copy from history or you import from Excel and you build a budget and you don't like it, 
you can simply delete it, restart over, um, so you're not really hurting anything, which makes it a low risk uh, type type activity. You can go in, do some do some what if scenarios and testing, and, and not have to worry about um, permanently creating entries in the system. So I kind of let's assume I'm done building my my budget. Um, just wanted to enter these few sales totals for the first six months of 2015. Now let's say I want to edit a budget value. There's a couple different ways that I can edit budget values. The best and easiest way is to simply click on an account in, an, in a field and adjust it. So let's say I want to adjust this to, to uh, 60,000. I'm just going to overwrite and put 60,000 in there. And now it's updated my budget. What it actually did was it actually, if I drill into that field, it's actually left my original entry and then calculated the net difference to show that I actually came in and adjusted this by $10,000. Now why this is helpful is I can actually click on edit here and type in adjusted due to new customer ABC. So you can actually track changes to your budget uh, as you're going along and then again, maybe I now change it to negative 65,000. And if I go back in here, it's now added a new one for another 5,000. And I could, again, I could go in edit. And maybe this is customer DEF, got another new customer. So things are going, going well for us here. Okay? So, I've, so that's, that's one way to edit your budgets. Another way to edit budget entries is to actually not change it in the overview screen but actually drill into the entries, right click on edit, and then just delete the GL budget entry. So this is, this is maybe more another a way you would want to do this if you really never intended for there to be a budget uh, amount in this account. Um, so you could just do it that way. And when I hit F5 to refresh my page, notice that it, it's taken away that budget amount for February. Now what I just did there was also the way that you can mass delete budget entries. Now this can be a little dangerous if you're not careful, but it's also what allows you to create a budget and then be able to just delete the entries without any concern. So for example, what I can do is drill into this budget entry here, and if I click on my advanced filter, you'll see that all this, is, all this is really doing is auto filtering to show me my current entries for this budget, this account, and this date range. I can simply remove these filters, and if I just clear those filters out, I'm now looking at all my budget entries that I just entered. And I can highlight multiple entries, I can highlight all of the entries, and I can delete them right from within here. That's uh, a, a quick and easy way if you want to do kind of a mass delete or even mass updates of, of budget entries. You can kind of do it, you know, right within that window. Good. So we've gone through how to create new budget entries, how to edit, a couple of different ways to edit budget, budget entries, um, and also delete. I did, for, I did um, also, the other way you can edit budget entries is simply clicking into a cell, right-clicking on edit, and just changing the amount. Now with this way you don't you lose the audit trail of the fact that it was originally 50,000 and I changed it to 66,000. Um, but that is again an, another way that you can just edit budget values. So let's type an amount in there to clean that up. Okay. All right. So next, let's talk about easier ways even than this to create budget entries. And that's using this copy budget tool up at the top of the budget overview. If I click on my copy budget function, you'll see that the screen's kind of divided on the options tab here into two sections, three sections. I have a copy from section, which determines what am I going to use as the source of my data for building this new budget. Then I have a copy to section where I define which budget name I want to copy these entries to, and then I have an apply section. This allows me to add an adjustment factor or change my date formula. So 
So let's go through a common example here where I want to use my 2014 actual data, or let's say my, yeah, my 2014 actual data, or budget data, let's start with budget data, to build a new 2015 budget. So what I'm going to do is, up by here, I'm going to copy from an existing budget, and then here I specify my budget name. Let's pick, uh, I don't have 2014, let's copy 2015 to 2016. So I'm going to copy 2015 budget, and I'm going to leave, I want all my entire budget to be copied. So I'm not going to set a filter on which accounts I want to, I want to copy. But you could, if you only were interested maybe in copying the sales section of accounts into the new budget, you could do that. Uh, or you could also maybe just do a certain set of months uh, in there. Uh, closing entries, you can include or exclude your closing entries in here. Um, typically, uh, you probably want to exclude your closing entries, but uh, that zeroes out your, your income statement at the end of the year. And then here I'm going to copy to. So let's copy to 2016. And again, I want all my accounts. So I'm not going to filter just a specific set of accounts. And then I do want to adjust. I want to, I want to assume 10% growth for my 2016 year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an adjustment factor of 1.1. And what the system will do is automatically take my entries from 2015 and multiply each value by 1.1 or, or an increase of 10% to come up with my new budget. I also can do rounding. So if I want to round to the nearest whole dollar, hundred dollar, ten dollar, or thousand dollar, I can apply a, a rounding amount in here. And then I have a date change formula. This is really important if I'm taking a prior year's budget and building a new budget. And so what I would do here, this is like a date formula field if you've ever used that in, uh, throughout NAV. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in here plus 1Y. And what that's going to do is it's going to add one year to each of my budget entries from the prior year. So this is what's enabling the system to take the 2015 budget and copy it over into the new year. Date compression, I don't have to worry about. I can leave that set to day, because I know that I've budgeted 2015 only per month, so I really don't need to do any, any um, consolidation. So I click OK. Do you want to start the copy? Yes, I do. Budget was successfully copied. So if I now go in to my 2016 budget here, I now have, and I have to remember now, I'm looking at 2015, so I have to scroll forward to my next set of data. Here's my 2016 budget. Notice that all, these are the same accounts that I had budgeted for in 2015, but they've all been increased by 10%. Okay. So I've now got my 2016 budget done. So that was pretty quick and easy. Now, I want to, before I go on to importing budgets, I want to show you one more important thing that you can do with copy budgets. Notice that when I ran this the, the first time, I did a copy from GL budget entry. I can also copy from actual GL entries. So this is really common for a lot of our customers. They say, you know what, I just want to take last year what we did, and I want to Again, increase my actual by 10% to build my new budget. And this is another way that you can get started with budgets in just minutes by just copying your prior year. So for example, let's say I want to copy my actual GL entries, and I want to copy all GL accounts. Now this is where I'm going to use these filters. I want to copy my GL entries from account 40,000 through 99999. And I want to copy those from 010114, let's say, where I have actual activity, through 123114. And again, I'll exclude my entries. Now I can also, also copy dimensions. So if you have dimensions set up and you have actual activity with dimensions, I can say, you know what, I want to build those departments into my budget for 20 for my next year here. So let's say I'm, I'm going to build my budget. Now there's no rule that says I can only take last year's and copy it to next year's. In this example, I can actually take 2014 data and I could ap apply that to my 2015 or 2016 budget 
by just changing my date formula, right? So one year or two years. Let's go back, let's say 2015. This is what you'd typically maybe be doing today. You'd be going from your 2014 actual data and then copying that into a 2015 budget. I'm going to add 10%. I also, this is also where I'm going to round because I've got all these transactions with pennies sitting out in my actuals. So in this case, I want to round it to the nearest $10, let's say. And I want to add one year or one year to all my 2014 dates to create my 2015 budget. And this is also where I'm going to use the date compression. I do not need an, a budgeted entry for 2015 for every single day that I had activity in 2014, right? I just need one number per account per month. So what I'm going to do is just simply set this date compression to budget, create these budget entries or consolidate all those entries to a monthly entry. Then when I click OK, same exact process, copy budget. Budget has been successfully copied. So in my 2015 budget, I'm in this Cronus company here. I'm not sure exactly what type of data I have out here. Um, but you can see, here you go, it's copied uh, a bunch of data in from my 2014 data, and it's rounded everything to the nearest $10. Right? So in this case, by using the copy from GL entry history, I've actually created in just minutes a detailed budget that I can now um, use against my financial reports. All right. So moving right along, the third thing, so we've talked about um, creating new budgets and, and manually entering budget values. We've talked about the copy budget feature. Next, let's talk about importing a budget from Excel. So let me, let me go into my 2016 budget here, and we'll look at, look at this data here. So the idea is, a lot of people ask, can't I just import a budget from Excel? The answer, the quick answer, the short answer is, this, these standard features require you to first export an Excel template, then edit those entries, and then you can import that right in. So if you have your own budgeting worksheet that you've been coming you, that you have that you've been using for years, you cannot just use that budget uh, worksheet to import. The system won't know what columns have which data in it. Um, now, of course, you could build a custom XML port or data port uh, to load entries into the GL budget entry table, uh, but that would require some development to match the import logic to your file format. So let's assume you don't have that access or don't want to go that route. How can I use Excel to quickly create my budget? And what, I want to, what we'll do here as an example is we'll take this 2016 data from the first six months and we'll extend it out through July through December. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Export to Excel. This is the first step. I have to build the template first. So I'm going to click Export to Excel. I want to start with my budget data from January 1st, 2016. I do want to export 12 months worth because I want 12 columns to show up on my spreadsheet. I'm going to do one month buckets. You can actually, if you're budgeting by week, you could actually export a spreadsheet template that, that has weekly buckets. And then I'm going to use uh, by department. And you always want to include totaling formulas. What this means is if you have totaling accounts built into your chart of accounts, it'll actually build those formulas in the Excel spreadsheet formula so that it reacts just like when I entered it here in my spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and click OK, and let's build that spreadsheet. Okay, so here's my Excel spreadsheet. Notice that I've got all this budget data that was sitting in my 2016 budget. Now, if, you have no, if you're starting with a clean budget that has no entries in it, you still want to run the same process. You're just going to end up with a blank spreadsheet, kind of like I have you know, for the, these sections here with all the zeros. Now, what I can do is I can use the power of Excel to do things like copy and drag out to budget for the rest of the year. And notice that the totaling formulas are automatically getting updated throughout the spreadsheet as I update these totals. 
So I, I use Excel. Let's do a couple more entries here. Let's just put 22,000 across my months. So I've now got this, these budget entries in here. I'm going to save this spreadsheet to my desktop. Oh, before I close, notice that I did, I, I included that I want to budget by dimension. If you budget by dimension, you have a column built into your spreadsheet where you can actually select which dimension you want applied to those entries. So the best practices would be, let's say you have these three departments, admin, production, and sales, and you have three individuals who are responsible for building their budgets. What you do is you export this template one time and then provide it to each of the individuals, and all they do is fill in their department code on all these columns here. And they, again, they could click and drag down. Um, but now you, you'll be importing uh, your budget by dimension. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So I've got the sales dim dimension code on here. Let's go back into my worksheet. I'm now going to select import from Excel. And I'm going to import, I want I'm going to import 2016. There's two options here. I can either replace the existing entries that were in my budget, or I can add new entries. I would do add new entries when maybe I'm doing this where I have four department managers who are each sending back to me their budget, and each one I want to continue to add their entries into my master budget, which then auto-consolidates everything into one. In this case, I'm just going to replace because I want to overwrite whatever I had in my budget um, with, this, with these new entries. And then here I can put a description so it's clear to me when these were created. So for example, let's just put in here, uh, Ken imported these and say OK. Here I select which file I want to import. So I want to pick my 2016 budget. Are you sure that you want to replace your entries? Yes, I do. GL budget entry table has successfully been updated with 883 entries. So there you go. So I now have taken my budget for the first six months of, of 2016. I've extended that out through the end of the year. I've got my $22,222 budgeted for my sales of resources. And also I can drill into any of these and I can see that description that I added, Ken imported these, and also the department, the dimension codes that came in along with those entries. So now that I've got my full budget uh, created, if I want to kind of look at it by department, all I need to do is go down to my filters fast tab and I can just set a department filter. Let's only look at sales entries. So now I filter it. Notice I'm looking at much more limited data here now. Let's, let's look at not sales. Let's look at uh, production. And the filters are automatically applied right within my, my budget. So I've effectively have, I have a, a budget for each of my departments now, but I also have a master budget. By just clearing the filter, I'm now looking at my budget across all departments or all dimension codes. All right. The last piece for today is taking this data now and being able to do financial reporting against this data. So I'm going to close my, my budget overview. And over under administration, I have my account schedules. Uh, so I don't want to go too much into details on account schedules today, just from a time constraint standpoint. But account schedules are your financial statement layouts. And what you'll notice here, I've got an, I've got an income statement. And I want to look at my income statement activity actual to budget. So let me go ahead and use the, the account schedule overview screen for this. Now, notice. I have my default column layout for my income statement set to actual budget comparison. So what I'm looking at here is my actual data for the month of January 2016, and then my budgeted data for 2016, variance dollars and variance percent. And you can use, you know, scroll through the months here. Notice my months are changing here in the account schedule overview. And you can look, really look at any period you want uh, to see, you know, how did I do actual to budget, uh, what's my variance, uh, and, and, and all the way down, 
right, all the way through your, your net income. What was my variance? Where did, where did we actually end up? Okay. So what I want to quickly just show is how did I set this up right here? Pretty quick. Uh, if I go into the account schedule screen, up on the top you have your edit column layout setup button. And I just click on there. And here's, I can choose a list of what all my column layouts are. Here's my actual to budget comparison. And all I have here, what the, 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 the magic that I did here, was that column A is my actual net change for that period. And that's looking at regular GL entries. But the next column is, I called it budget. It's the net change, but instead of looking at actual entries, I'm looking at budget entries. So this is the key right here. Now that I've got those two columns, I can just create a formula column that says, you know, this is variance dollars, which is a formula, which is just A minus B, column A minus column B, and then a variance percent, which is another formula, column C divided by column B times 100 uh, to show it in a, in a percentage uh, style. So that's also, again, I go back into the overview, and I can, I can drill down. Again, I can drill down into my budget entries also. So if you want to see what makes up that, that budgeted amount, just like you can drill into actual, actual entries, you can drill down into budgeted entries. So here's some entries that you see. These are the ones that we, we imported. Um, can imported these to the sales department. So you can actually drill down and also look at your, your budget uh, data as well as your, your actuals within here. All right, so I, I managed to get through everything. One thing I just want to kind of um, talk about here, I, I, I disregarded my slides. Um, the slides will be available afterward, um, I believe. Uh, there's not too much substance here, but the one thing I wanted to uh, show was just uh, you know, to say thank you, see if there was any questions. That, uh, we have plenty of time for some questions. My contact uh, name and, and email address is here. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is that I do have um, a document created specifically for this session. It's a 27-page Microsoft Word document. It talks about um, it basically everything we went through. So a step, how to create a new budget, um, adding a new budget name, how to create entries, how to set up your screen, pretty much all of the content that we went through. Um, if you, if you uh, would like a copy of it, feel free to just send me an email, and I'll just send you a, a copy of that documentation uh, so that you have that refer to later to go back and, and hopefully build your budget uh, today or tomorrow. So I think with that, I'll uh, pass it off uh, back see if there's any questions. Great, Ken. Thank you so much. That was a great presentation, really wonderful information. We're going to open it up for questions, so feel free to type your questions in the panel over on the right-hand side, and I'd be happy to read those aloud. If you'd prefer to ask your question aloud, feel free to raise your hand with the little hand icon over in the panel, and I would be happy to unmute you for your question. Again, I just want to mention that we will be posting the webinar recording out on the NAVAG website, and we'll be posting Ken's PowerPoint along with that. You can access those recordings by signing into the website, heading over to the content library, and um, this will be posted under the finance um, folder, and you will also receive an email with the link to the location as well. We have our first question, Ken. In exporting a budget using dimensions, would you export each budget having been filtered before export? Um, uh, good question. Um, you can't. So it depends on if you already have budget entries inside of the budget that you're exporting. So for example, if I already have this sales budget created here, let's say I already have entries for my sales budget here, when I export it, I would export by department, and then down here, I can actually, yes, filter for only the sales department entries to be exported. And then when I export that entry, 
I now am only looking at my sales budget data. It's filtered that. Now I can edit this data and then import that in. Now if I didn't have any budget entries already and I was starting with a fresh, clean budget, then you, you could do it, but you don't have to because uh, it'll allow you within that column to actually pick the dimensions that, that you want to apply. Great question. Thank you, Jacqueline. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, with that, Ken, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate the great presentation and great information. And as I mentioned, we will be posting this out on the website. So if you'd like to share it with your team, your NAVUG membership covers uh, the entire company. So feel free to either forward that email on with the link to the webinar recording to your other team members or show them how to download the presentation materials as well. So Ken, thank you. Um, have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and we hope to see you on another webinar soon. Bye for now. Bye. -bye.